Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for our Bible study tonight. Thank you because you bring us together for a good purpose so you can reveal your mind to us. You know the past, you know the present, you know the future. And I say, Lord, in the future we need to learn, we need to know. We're praying, oh Lord, as we come here today, knowing what has happened in the past, connecting with the present and also reveal, being revealed to us as things in the future. We're praying, Lord, you wake us up and make us be at alert. So we'll be wise unto salvation in Jesus' name. We're praying, Lord, that as we learn all these things, we pray that we'll be able to stand firm in the knowledge that you're giving us in the salvation of the Lord, in the goodness of the Lord, so that, Lord, we'll escape the evil things and the dangerous things and the calamities coming on the world in the future. So that when the rapture will take place, we as your people will be among the people of God all over the world to go in the rapture in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that today you'll keep, keep us away as we learn your word. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bible study today. We're going back to the study of the book of Revelation. And today we're in Revelation chapter 12. I'm looking at verse 7 all through to verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, reading from verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse, which accuse them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And he loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell therein. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath. Because he knows that he has but a short time. That's what we're looking at today, what we're studying today. If you look at the first verse that I read to you, verse 7, you'll see in verse 7, and there was war in heaven. And if you look at the last verse, in verse that is in verse 12, you'll see, therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. And you bring those two things together, verse 7 and verse 12, and everything in between you are going to discover, war in heaven and wrath on earth. That's why we have put the title of this story today as those two composite things. On the one hand, war in heaven. On the other hand, wrath on earth. What is revealed in this chapter dates back to the past when Satan fell. And it also looks to the future, revealing what will happen during the great tribulation. In this passage, there are things that cause joy, that cause happiness, that cause celebration in the hearts of the people of God, the redeemed and the ransomed and the saints in heaven. On the other hand, there are things that bring fear and torment and torture and terror in the hearts of men especially men on earth and when these things actually begin to happen in reality there will be that kind of torture and terror in the hearts of the people on earth when they begin to see the wrath of the devil and indignation and the judgment coming upon everybody on earth the revelation here tells us of the war in heaven it, that is between uh, Satan, Lucifer, and Michael, the archangel, and also the angels of the devil, and the holy angels of God. And then it tells us of the victory won by the angels of God over the devil and over his angels, and then the consequent wrath on the earth. 
you need to understand that Satan is not yet in hell. And the demons are not all in hell. There are times that people will pray and they will say, I command you, Satan, go into hell fire right now. Uh -uh. That prayer is never answered because in God's chronolog chronology, that is in God's timetable, the devil is not in hell fire yet. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that he is the prince of the power of the air. And what does the Bible say in Job chapter 1 verse 7? Satan himself said he was going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it. It's not in hell yet. In fact, we are told in the New Testament, your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That tells us then that this uh, devil or Satan or the old serpent or the red dragon is not yet in hell fire actually it was once in heaven and it caused a great war in heaven it was the archangel the cherub that covered but he had an ulterior motive an ambition selfish ambition and therefore the first war ever fought was in heaven when lucifer attempted to, to dethrone god and enthrone himself michael the archangel and the holy angels had to fight against satan and the fallen angels Satan then was defeated and cast in out of the out of heaven and cast into the earth and on earth now he fights and that's what the devil does every time and he fights everywhere and he has just one plan because he failed in heaven and what he wanted to carry out he couldn't carry out because of that he has come to the earth and he's come with a great great rod and he's fighting What's he fighting? Number one, he's fighting the plan of God. He knows that God has a plan for this world. God has a plan for the earth because he wants to give the earth, the whole earth, as an inheritance, as a gift unto his only begotten son. And the devil is fighting that plan. Number two, he's fighting the purpose of God. That is the purpose of God, or what God has desired, what God has said, this is what I will do. Every time God says, I will, I will, then the devil says, no, you will not, but I will. And because of that, number two, is fighting the purpose of God. Number three, is fighting the prophecies of God. All that God has proclaimed, that this is how the world will end. And this is the program of God. And it goes from this point to this point to this point. From the time of creation to the time of redemption. And to the time of consummation of all things. The program of God. The prophecies in the Bible. The devil is fighting that. Number four. The devil is fighting the promises of God. All the promises he has made to Abraham. And to Isaac and to Jacob. And he has said through you I will bless all the people on earth. Not only that, all the promise that he made unto Israel as a nation. That Israel will still become the head and not the tail. And Israel will still reign and Israel will be his son. Let my son go. And he said Israel is my firstborn. And I'm going to deal with Israel this way, this way and that way. And the devil is fighting the promise of God. Number five, the devil is fighting the preaching of the gospel. Because he knows it's by the preaching of the gospel that everything eventually will be brought into place. That Calvary will be exalted. And the cause of the sacrifice of Christ will be honored. And because of that, he's fighting the preaching of the gospel. Number six, is fighting the people of God. The people of God is fighting us. He fought in the Old Testament and he fought in the New Testament. And you know how many of the apostles were imprisoned? And you know how many times Paul the apostle went to jail? And you know how many times he was shipwrecked? And you know how many times they just wanted to destroy him because of the preaching of the gospel? He told the Thessalonians, I would have been with you, perfecting your faith and helping you that you may become unblameable in holiness and righteousness. But Satan hindered us. He's fighting the people of God. Number seven is fighting the Prince of Peace. The Lord Jesus Christ. And that is actually the climax and the culmination of the war against uh, everything that is good, everything that is righteous, everything that is true. Would you understand then that the devil is in the business of conflict and war or warfare and is fighting, fighting the plan of God, 
fighting the purposes of God, fighting the prophecy of God, fighting the promises of God, fighting the preaching of the gospel, fighting the people of God, fighting the Prince of Peace. And he knows his destiny. He knows that he has but a short time. Oh, you say, is that a short time? Because now if the devil has been here, from the time of the Garden of Eden, all through to the time of Job, all through to the time of David, all through to the time of Malachi, all through to the time of Jesus Christ, he tempted Jesus on the, in the wilderness, all through the time was nailed to the cross, that shall bruise his seal, he will bruise your head. And all through the time of Paul the Apostle, Satan hindered us. And all through the time of the churches in Asia Minor, I know where you dwell where satan's seat is and yet even though satan's seat is there you are upholding my name and up through to the time of the great revelation you say that's a long long time oh yes it appears long compared with eternity all the time from adam until the time of the great revelation is still a short time and that's why the devil comparing the time that is and the time sh that shall be in eternity all through eternity he knows he has but a short time because of that he fights seriously with a great rod. and then when the great tribulation eventually comes and he knows that the great tribulation is just a period of seven years he will know that now the time left is very very short because of that he will move in great trust against israel and against all the people on the earth that's what we're looking at today we're looking at the past and we're looking at the future and we're looking at the things that shall be war in heaven and wrath on earth I divide the study to three parts. Number one, the dragon's conflict and war in heaven. Number two, the dragon conquered and cast out of heaven. Number three, defeating the dragon cast down from heaven. Let's come back to point number one. The dragon's conflict and war in heaven. I read verses 7 and 8 of the passage you are looking at, the passage you are studying today. That is... Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 and 8 and there was war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was there found any more place in heaven it was a real great battle do I need to remind you that one third of the angels of God actually they followed after Lucifer, they followed after the devil. If you look at Revelation chapter 4, reading from chapter 12, reading from verse 4, it says, And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. I explained to you in our last study that the stars of heaven, this uh, this the angel, the angels of God. And you know the angels of God are innumerable. There are thousands of thousands and myriads of millions, millions of millions. And yet one third of that number, one third of the innumerable angels of God, they were attracted by the plan of the devil. He must have promised them quite a lot. And he said, I'll make it, I'll rule. I'll exalt my throne above the throne of God. And when that takes place, I'll put you in charge. And then they followed after him. He has always been a deceiver. It is what we're looking at now. The dragon's conflict and war in heaven. Think about that. War. Even in heaven. And you think about the earth here. And you think there is any, you, you are thinking as you read about war here and war there. And warfare and conflict in various places. How can this be? And they tell us with many churches on earth. And with many churches in our city. And with many churches in our country. And you see there are still conflicts and problems. Ah, even in heaven. Because of the presence of Satan. The devil, the old serpent, Lucifer. The dragon. Because of his presence there. There was war in heaven heaven and now he's on earth and because satan is on earth that is why you find that there is a war and there is conflict here on earth as well it, it tells us in this verse 7 you see there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon against the dragon let me remind you once again who the dragon is the identity of that dragon in revelation chapter 20 verse 2 revelation chapter 20 verse 2 and he laid hold 
on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Here the dragon is uh, giving us, as it says, it's a dragon. By its nature, it's a dragon. By its activity, it's a dragon. And by its violence, it's a dragon. But really, that's the old serpent. And it's called the devil. And his name is also called Satan. As you bring all those uh, things together, you understand, when it says that it's the old serpent, that means uh, the one that appeared to Eve in the Garden of Eden, old, old time. And then we're told he caused the trouble. How did he really cause the trouble? What, what made uh, the conflict uh, to really come up? We're told in James chapter 4. James chapter 4, reading from verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? It tells us anytime there's conflict, anytime there's war, it means that somebody somewhere is having inordinate affection, is having lost, wrong, selfish desires and ambition. Actually, and that's what caused uh, the war in heaven, because Lucifer, was not satisfied with the position and the privilege that the Lord had given him. There was an evil desire, prompted by an ambition of self-exaltation, to have extended dominion. The ambition for extended rule and love for conquest and gratification of corrupt passions stirred Lucifer's heart to begin a war. And let's see the kind of desire he had and the kind of a prompting that came to him and the kind of ambition that he had as we look at Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12. How art, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Here was the ambition and the desire, evil desire, the self-exaltation. And he wanted extended kingdom, extended dominion. And that was a problem. And that is what causes problem today when people are not satisfied with their territory. They are not satisfied with their possession. They are not satisfied with their inheritance. And they want expansion, extension of what they have. And they are jealous of what other people are. And that's what causes all this uh, one conflict. It happens in families, it happens in tribes, it happens in states, it happens in nations, it happens in the world all over. In heaven here is what happened. Lucifer was there. And the Lord had given him a great, great privilege and position. And his name was Lucifer. And the meaning of that, the son of the morning. And then he began to say, I will ascend. I will go up. This level I am and this position I have is not sufficient for me. I'll ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sights of the north. In verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And that, that's actually what caused the war. Then in verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. That is, immediately he had that ambition. Then the Lord took a decision. No, you will not have what you want. Although there will be war, there will be conflict. But that's, this is not your right. This is not a position. It will not be given to you. That's what caused the war. Actually, if you look at um, Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. I'm reading to you from verse 11. In Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 11. Again, we have the story of uh, Lucifer here. Here we have more information about him. In verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in 
beauty. You need to understand that uh, when you read the word of God, there are some passages that are some passages that have the application of double interpretation. And this is one of them. On the one hand, there was a king of Tyros. And the Lord was speaking to the king of Tyros because it was so much like Lucifer, like the devil, like Satan, like the old serpent. And yet the real death of prophecy here is actually addressed to Lucifer, that dragon, and that Satan, that devil, the old serpent. And then it says he was perfect in beauty. That was being in, the, in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was like covering. The sardius and the topaz and the diamond and the burial and the onyx and the jasper and the sapphire and the emerald and the carbuncle and the gold the workmanship of thy tablet and of thy pies was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created thou art the anointed cherub that covereth i have said thee so thou wast upon the holy mountain of god thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the sons of fire that was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee you see that these cannot refer to an ordinary man because all the description here will go beyond application to the king of tyros alone to tyros alone but you'll see here this is talking about this fellow the devil in verse 15 thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the the midst of thee with violence and thou hast seen therefore i will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of god out of heaven and i will destroy thee o covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty do you see that because he saw his power his privilege his wealth his position and because he saw his beauty that's the reason pride lifted him up and then it says your heart was lifted up because of your beauty thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of the of thy brightness i will cast thee to the ground i will lay thee before kings and that they may behold thee and you will understand then that this a devil and that that's what he was but then there was this ulterior motive that he had and there was this a conflict that then generated because of the inordinate affection and the impure desire that he had and that's the reason that michael had to confront him if you come back to revelation chapter 12 revelation chapter 12 and in verse 7 you remember how everything now ensued how everything came up in verse 7 and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not it was a real a really great battle because the devil wanted to win by all means he wanted to dethrone god so that he'll be able to set up his own throne michael and the holy angels had to crush that rebellion so they were drawn into the conflict satan wanted to rule he wanted to be like the most high michael and the holy angels were compelled to fight against that unholy ambition of lucifer of the devil of satan michael's warfare against satan did not stop with that initial war and conflict he had to fight against him on another count what other count well moses had been chosen by god and moses had been used of god in a, in a mighty way and eventually moses died and the lord did not want the children of israel to know where moses will be buried he did allow them to know the tomb or the sepulcher of moses because of the tendency of the children of israel to go into idolatry because of the great signs and wonders that moses had done those israelites might just take the body of moses and then they will be worshiping that body and eventually as god himself took care of the dead body of moses satan was contending for the body of moses again and then eventually another warfare conflict ensued again it was michael it looks like this michael was always the one to be able to take him on and to be able to put him down if you look at jude verse 9 
Jude verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. You see, when Michael was fighting against uh, Satan, against the devil, concerning the body of Moses, and the, Michael was saying, this man belongs to God. He was chosen by God. He's a servant of God. And then Satan must have been, because he's the accuser of the brethren, he must have been saying, but he did this, but he did that. And then Michael said, but God forgive him. And then the devil said another thing. Then Michael said, The Lord rebuke thee. Even the Mark, Michael the archangel will not overcome the devil in his own power, in his own strength. It was in the power, the strength and the might of the Lord by which he was able to overcome the enemy. He was able to overcome Lucifer, the devil. And he said, The Lord rebuke thee. And yet it appears that he didn't finish there because uh, uh, the devil continued all that he wanted to do and he continued the fight. And yet again, it will be at the end of time. If you look at Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10, uh, this time now Daniel was praying. He was waiting upon the Lord. He wanted to know what's the plan of God for the people of Israel, for the people of God. And Daniel was fasting and praying so that the Lord will reveal to him what will become of the children of Israel in the latter times. Daniel chapter 10, I'm looking at verse 2 and verse 3. In those days, I Daniel mourn, I Daniel was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And then in verse 10, and behold, and hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon, upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upon and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. And then he tells us, Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, and lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the, with the kings of Persia. And now, now am I come? To make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. You see, Daniel wanted to receive from the Lord information, revelation, vision. Concerning what will happen to the children of Israel in the latter days. And Satan will fight that. Satan will fight that. Therefore, the king of Persia, the king of Persia here is the evil spirit on top or on Persia, controlling, influencing Persia at that time. And it's a messenger of the devil. And again, it took Michael to be able to release this messenger angel to give the message unto Daniel. In verse 19, it says, And said, O man, greatly be Lord, fear not. Peace be unto thee, and be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now I will return to fight the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. But I will show thee. That which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. You see Michael the archangel was interested in the affairs of the children of Israel. Because he had been appointed as a prince of the people of God. And then in, at the time of the great tribulation. There will be another time when Michael will still get involved. If you look at Daniel chapter 12. I, I say it's the time of great tribulation because if you look at verse 7, in verse 7, and I had the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand, 
and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be that it shall be for a time one year and times two years making three and a half making three and a half years the period of the intense terrible serious great revelation and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people all these things shall be finished now come back to verse one and at that time at that time, at the time of the great tribulation, a time and times and half a time, three and a half years, at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book, written in the book of life. So then, at the time of the great tribulation, there will still be this warfare against the devil. And then Michael will be the prince that will deliver the people of God. And then we come back to, let's come back to Revelation chapter chapter. 12 revelation chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 7 again in verse 7 it says in verse 8 now and prevailed not he will never prevail i said he will never prevail at the beginning when he got that war that conflict against uh, the angels of god and against god in heaven he did not prevail when he came to the world and he fought against jesus he did not prevail you are a child of god he will not prevail against you he will fight, but he will fail. His messengers will fight, but he will fail. Look at the promise for you in Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading in verse 19. This is for you. You will overcome. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. The Lord will deliver you. Jeremiah chapter 15 verses 20 and 21 Jeremiah chapter 15 verses 20 and 21 I will make thee unto this people a faced brazen wall and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee says the Lord I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible you can rest assured then the Lord is on your side. And the Lord will defend you. And the Lord will protect you. Although they may fight, all those messengers of Satan, they have never prevailed. They will never prevail. They will not prevail against you. In Psalm 129, Psalm 129, I'm reading from verse 2. Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. As you look back at all the things that have happened to you since you were very, very young, you can say many a time they have afflicted me and they have fought against me and they have tried to destroy me, but they have not prevailed. We come to point number two. The dragon conquered and cast out of heaven. In Revelation chapter 12, reading from verses 9 and 10. And a great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The great dragon was cast out. Already we've seen the identity of the great dragon. It's referred to as the old serpent, as the devil and as Satan. He was cast out of heaven. This happened in some far distant period in the past when Satan was ejected from heaven. And his angels were cast out with him because they shared the same ambition. And because they fought against the plan of God, against the purpose of God, because they were united in the conflict, they were united in the judgment. And so they shared the lot of their leader, referring to Satan as the old serpent just reveals that he was a real tempter in the Garden of Eden. When, they, when he came to tempt Eve uh, in the form of a serpent, the word old refers to the fact that uh, his appearance on earth was at an early stage of the world's history. And it's called Satan. And we're told that he deceives the whole world. 
That's his business. That's what he does. He deceives the whole world. And can I just show you that this devil has not changed in his character? He has not changed. If you look at that verse 9, again, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. Which deceives the whole world. And let me just show you some scriptures that will tell you that he's still a deceiver. And that is the business of the devil. That's the activity of the devil. And then he uses the people that surrender their, themselves to him to deceive. I pray he will not deceive you. In John chapter 8 verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. And the loss of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. That means then. As you look at the nature of the devil. Or the character of the devil. His character is to tell lies. is to deceive. And then we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. That his messengers too, that's exactly what they do. Because they serve him. Because they work for him. And because they have his nature. And they have his characteristics and attributes. They are going to do exactly like he does. Second Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. False prophets, false apostles, false teachers, false pastors, false leaders, church leaders. They transform themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So you see then that the, uh, the work of the devil is just to deceive. And in the great tribulation, that is at the time of the great tribulation, that's going to be a serious thing. That the whole world will be deceived by him. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 8. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the walking of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders power signs and wonders but they're lying wonders they are, they are wonders signs and wonders miracles that are calculated to deceive then it says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. That is, the people that do not love the truth, the people that do not love sound doctrine, the people that do not love the, the word of God concerning a righteous life, a pure life, a holy life, a sanctified life. Those people are going to be easily deceived because they receive not the knowledge, the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And at the time of the great tribulation, is going to really come out in its true colors, but the people will not know. And it's going to deceive in various ways. In Revelation chapter 13, reading verse 14. Revelation chapter 13, reading verse 14. And deceiveth them, that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. That is the devil, the false prophet, and will be able to deceive by means of the miracles that he has power to do. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had, which had the wound by a sword and did live. So then you understand that is the act deceiver, the chief deceiver. In Revelation chapter 20, I'm reading from verses 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 20 verse 2. And laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set his seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. After that, he must be loosed a little season. 
at the end of all things at the end of the great tribulation in particular there will be the millennial reign a millennium is a thousand and for those thousand years it will be shut up in the bottomless pit and then he'll be released again. Why would he be released? Because there being the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, all through those 1,000 years, reigning and ruling and helping people and giving them everything they needed. And then they'll be tested whether or not they'll submit to the Lord. And the devil will be released again. When the devil is released again, what will he be doing? It's normal work. It's normal business. The only thing he knows how to do, that's how to deceive. Look at verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of the out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. You see, that's all he knows to do. He doesn't know to do any other thing. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up, up uh, on the breast of the of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them and the devil which deceived them the devil which deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever so we understand from all these scriptures we have read that satan is a deceiver and you'll be very careful so that he will not deceive you and i pray he will not catch you but you see the bible says he was cast out he was judged there is no one so strong there's so one so there's no one so malicious that the almighty god cannot judge because god is the judge of all the earth and it's the one that can if he could judge lucifer if he could judge the angels that fell he can judge any man and he will judge and in luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 verse 18 and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven jesus confirmed the fall of satan jesus confirmed the very fact that he was in heaven before but the lord said i beheld him and he fell from heaven we're told in john chapter 12 still talking about the judgment of satan the judgment of lucifer john chapter 12 verse 31 now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out cast out let's come back to revelation chapter 12 and uh, gather some things in these two verses we're looking at now verses 9 and 10 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and then in verse 10 and i had a loud voice saying in heaven now is now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuse them before god before our god day and night here we find heaven rejoicing the great enemy was expelled and the conquering host in heaven united in celebration in celebrating that victory god is praised because he has granted salvation full deliverance from the intended dominion of satan the strength the strength to cast out the dragon is the mighty power of god manifested in subduing the great enemy with the certainty of ultimate triumph that the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ will be established that's why the whole of heaven rejoiced and jubilated because of the victory that came unto them and actually this victory had been prophesied from the time of the old testament if you look at um, psalm 22 in psalm 22 reading from verse 28 you will see that uh, the, the reigning of the lord and the dominion of the lord have been prophesied for a long time in Psalm 22 verse 28 Psalm 22 verse 28 here we're told for the kingdom is the Lord's 
and he is the governor among the nations which tells us then that ultimately the rulership the authority will belong to the almighty god in psalm 145 psalm 145 reading from verse 11 to verse 13 Psalm 145, reading from verse 11, they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. And so then what had been prophesied and what had been decided in the courts of heaven thousands of years before, even in eternity past, how could Satan thwart the effort and the prophecy and the decision of God, the plan of God? Actually, if you look at Psalm 2, Psalm 2, reading from verse 1, you will see that eventually the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, he will reign and rule. We're told in Psalm 2, reading from verse 1, why do the heathen rage? Or the, and the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bounds asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that seateth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then will he speak, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. The Lord will say, whatever Lucifer tries, Whatever Satan after his name was changed, whatever the devil, whatever the old, old serpent attempts, Christ will see reign because he says in verse 6, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession, and thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So then we understand that the might of God and the power of God will prevail eventually. Now we know that the devil is in the world and is fighting today. He's fighting every child of God. He's fighting the plan of God for your life and the purpose of God for your life. Will he win? He will never win. You will be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 5. 5 verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a running lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And you'll not be one of them. Amen. Whom receives steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplishing your brethren that are in the world. That tells us then that we are going to be the victor. We are going to be the overcomer. We're going to overcome in Jesus' name. Eventually, we see the declaration of heaven. What's the declaration of heaven? That God will be on the top. And God will conquer every foe and every power. And he will reign. Christ will reign forever and ever. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. Revelation 11 verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign how long forever and ever we come to point number three defeating the dragon cast down from heaven defeating the dragon the dragon that is cast down from heaven in revelation chapter 12 reading verses 11 and 12 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb by the word of their testimony and he loved not their lives unto the death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell therein in them woe unto the inhabitants inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great trust because he knows that he has but a short time eventually he was defeated we're told that the dragon the devil who was cast out of heaven was cast onto the earth unhappy 
that he was not able to fulfill his evil desire, evil design in heaven. He comes down to the earth with a great wrath. He lost the war in heaven. And he knows for the short time that he has on earth, he wants to spread war and sorrow and suffering and hinder as many people as he can from submitting to the rule of God and the Lordship of Christ. And has engaged in such warfare against all on earth since the beginning of the world and will continue until the, uh, until the time of the great tribulation. You remember that it was Satan that appeared in the Garden of Eden and caused Eve and Adam to sin against God and eventually to be uh, to be expelled from the Garden of Eden. And not only that, he was the one that injected evil design into the corrupt hearts of the men in the days of Noah. And that generation perished in their sin. Wasn't it Satan, the great adversary, the destroyer that destroyed Job's family and is ever walking about all the world seeking whom he may devour. And today the Bible says that he is the one who's Tells away the word of God that is planted and sown in the heart of men so that it will not produce repentance and lead the people to salvation. Jesus said, The soil went forth to sow the word, and some fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and plucked out the seed of the word that was sown in their hearts. And in interpretation, Jesus said, The one that took away the word that was sown in their hearts was the devil, was Satan. Not only that, is the one that sows tears in the Lord's field of wheat, that Satan's work. Yet, in spite of the fury of Satan, in spite of his wrath, in spite of his hindrance and persecution, there will be multitudes of overcomers on the last day. And we will be among that number. Yeah. And the Bible tells us, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. A look at the word of God as we celebrate our victory. Your own victory, my own victory, a victory together. Because we'll be victorious. We'll be more than a conqueror. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Looking at it in verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I remind you, there will be no victory if there is no battle, if there is no conflict, if there is no warfare. So don't be afraid of warfare. We know that the victory already is determined even before the beginning of the warfare because we are the people that will win the victory in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Not sometimes, not many times. Every time the devil, Satan, that will serpent, the dragon, may come from any direction. But thanks be unto God because he always causes us to have the victory and to triumph in Christ. And he maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Every place we find ourselves, we shall overcome. But how do we overcome? How do we overcome? In 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Reading verses 13 and 14. 1 John chapter 2. Verses 13 and 14. It tells us how the young man, that he is the young man in Christ, how they overcame. It tells us in verse 13, I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one. That's the devil. That's Satan. That's the old serpent. That's the dragon. Ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because ye have known the father. In verse 14, I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write, I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. Let me read that last part again. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong. How did they become strong? Because the word of God abideth in you. That's why the devil will try every trick he has in the box. Every trick he has in his brain. To take the word of God away from us. Because he knows the only way, the only means, the only avenue by which we can overcome him is the word abiding in us. 
I write unto you. I have written unto you, young men, because he has strong, and the word of God abideth in you. And then he says, and ye have overcome the wicked one. I want to encourage you that this word of God you are hearing, don't let it ever depart from you. So that when the wind will blow, when the storm will come, when the devil will rage in his fury and wrath, you'll be able to use the sword of the word, and you'll overcome him in Jesus' name. Now, if you notice in that verse 11, it says they overcame him. And he mentions three things. Number one, by the blood of the lamb. Number two, by the word of their testimony. Number three, they loved not their lives unto the dead. As we talk about the blood of the lamb in Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Romans chapter 5, looking at verse 9. Much more than being not justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him that is as you look about you look at our forgiveness and redemption you look at our salvation it is by the blood of the lamb and it says because we have been redeemed and purchased and saved by the blood of the lamb we shall be saved from wrath by his life in his power as you look at first peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19 first peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19 it is said uh, this uh, blood the blood of the lamb that makes us holy and keeps us holy and it is the power in the blood of the lamb that actually keeps us in the victory in first peter chapter 1 reading from verse 18 first peter 1 verse 18 for as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers but with the precious blood as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. I told you already to you that there are three things. And number one is the blood of the lamb. Number two, the word of their testimony. Always keep that word in your mouth because it is that word that is going to conquer the enemy. As you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 uh, you will see how we overcome and how you will always overcome in second uh, corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 it says we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed therefore have i spoken we also believe therefore speak speak the word of god Speak the promises of God against the devil. When he comes in any direction, raise up the standard and the weapon of the word of God because that is how you're going to overcome. Let me show you how to do it in Acts of the Apostles chapter 27 verse 25. Acts of Apostles chapter 27 verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Don't worry about the storm. Don't worry about the conflict. And don't worry about the devil. He's a defeated foe and he's under our feet already. Be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. That's how to overcome. That when you face the raging storm. And when you face the warfare. And when you face the time of the battle. You tell everybody. And don't worry about this. Be of good cheer. I believe God. It shall be. Even as it was told me. And then we're told number three there. That they loved not their lives unto the dead. That means they're so committed to the Lord. And they have conviction. That the Lord was by them. And now whatever happens, and the devil may threaten, and the devil may even use his messengers and agents to threaten, I will kill you. I will destroy you. He thinks that when he says that, you are going to be trembling and you are going to be shaking, but he doesn't know that you believe in Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. And you say, you cannot do anything to me. Jesus has conquered you. And Jesus has conquered death. And because of that, I will even lay my life on the line, defending the authority of the word and the spiritual infallibility of the word. I'm standing on the unchanging word of God. And then when the devil sees like that, that they love not their lives even unto the death, he will leave you alone. 
I said they will leave you alone. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. Matthew chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 25. Here the Lord is telling us, the attitude well to have. You deposit your life into the hands of the Lord. And after you have deposited your life into the hands of God, you're not fearful anymore of what any man can do, what any devil can do, what any demon can do, what any witch can do, what any wizard can do. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. Whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. That is, whosoever will, you know, be protecting his life. I can't go to the Bible study because it's night. And I can't go on the road and go to church service because it's night. And he's, you know, keeping himself and he's trying to protect himself. He, he's, he's too cautious. And he's saying there's danger here, there's danger there. Therefore, I cannot do the work of God. I cannot go and evangelize. I cannot go to the fellowship. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. He will lose his life because he's trying to keep his life by himself. But the one that says, I've given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to expend my time, my life, my blood, my energy for the Lord. Then it says in the second part of that verse, it says, whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Whosoever will say, I throw my life into the service of God. And I don't care the threatening of the devil. He says, you are the one that will be protected. You know, that. let me show you in the language of Paul the Apostle. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 21 acts of the apostles chapter 21 i'm reading to you from verse 10 acts chapter 21 verse 10 it says and as we tarried there many days there came from judea a certain prophet named agabus and when he was come unto us he took the girdle he took paul's girdle and he bound his own hands and feet and said thus says the holy ghost so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when they, when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him, besought him not to go to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, "What mean ye? To weep and to break mine heart." For I am ready not to be bound only, but I am for I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we see saying, The will of the Lord be done. Those are the people that overcome, and you will be among the number. You just give your life into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and then you don't care what the people of the world are saying and what the threatenings of the people are and you have overcome already. Before we pray, before we come to the end, let me just read this to you in Romans chapter, in Romans. But I read chapter 8 first and then I double it to chapter 16. I read chapter 16 to you. In Romans chapter, 16, chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 37. It tells us, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Who are the people more than conquerors? We. We are here. God bless you. You will overcome. I said you will overcome. Yeah. They overcame the devil originally. And every time he has always come against the faithful people of God, the people of God always overcame. You all will not be an exception. You will be an overcomer too. Because he says no. In all these things, everything, put everything together. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Because I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able. Shall be able. Neither. None of these things shall be able to separate us, to be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our our Lord give me a good amen. amen and in Romans chapter 16 verse 20 the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly amen. stand up and put that Satan under your feet and put all his problems under your feet and put all this conflict under your feet all this warfare on the, don't cry for the devil don't cry for the messengers of satan don't look back because of the messengers of satan you have overcome god calls you a conqueror god calls you more than a conqueror are you looking back are you becoming timid and becoming fearful when the lord says the lord shall subdue the devil satan that will serpent the dragon 
under your feet shortly. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. They overcame him, and they loved not their lives unto the death. He will not overcome you. The devil will not overcome you. Satan will not overcome you. And sickness will not overcome you. And all the powers of darkness will not overcome you. All those things that appear to you in the night, they will not overcome you. We're not even in the time of a great tribulation yet. All that we see today, they are small, minor, minor, minor things. And they cannot overcome you. You have overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome. Whatever you see in the day, whatever you see in the dream, you are, you are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Nay, in all these things, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us, through him that loved us, he gave himself for us. We have overcome. My brother, you have overcome. My sister, you have overcome. My daughter, my son there, you have overcome. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You will, you, will not be, you will not be defeated. You will not be conquered. They will not prevail against you. The might of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord will make sure that you overcome all the time. You'll be on top. You'll be on top. You'll not be beneath. All the arrows he throws at you. All the darts he throws at you. All the machinations of the devil. All the maneuvering of the devil. You will overcome. You will overcome. Don't be afraid. Don't be timid. Don't look back. Don't cringe. And don't cry for the devil. Don't cry before the agents of Satan. And don't cry for the enemy. Because they, overcome, they overcame him. And we shall overcome him. By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of our testimony. And then you lay your life on the line. I give my life to you, Lord. And I care not what they say. I care not what they do. I care not from what direction they are coming. I've given my life to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. And he will keep what I've deposited into his hand. I am confident of this one thing. That he will keep what I've committed into his hand against that day. You will overcome. You have overcome already. You are standing on your problem. You are standing on the, on the devil. The dragon is defeated already and is cast down. He will not overcome you. He will not overcome you. Whatever direction he comes from, he will not overcome you. He cannot overcome you. We have overcome. We have overcome. Yes, we have overcome. Ours is the victory. You can celebrate your victory. You can celebrate your triumph. Anytime, every time. Ours is a victory. Ours is a victory. You overcame by the blood of the Lamb. You plead the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus. That's the blood that saved you. That's the blood that sanctified you. That's the blood that gave you the blessing of redemption. And you overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. An overcomer, more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror. In all these things, we are more than a conqueror. In all these things, we are more than a conqueror. You will overcome. It's done already. It's done already. It may seem like a monster, seem like a dragon, seem like a serpent. Whatever you see, what picture you see, whatever portrait you see. Don't worry about the portrait. Don't worry about what you see. Don't worry about the picture. Don't worry about the monster. What we know is that the lion of the tribe of Judah, that's the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, he has overcome him on your behalf. He has overcome him on your behalf. No more fear. No more timidity for the devil. No more cringing. No more running away. No more crying. No more worry. No more anxiety victory victory all the time all the way through victory we have overcome we have overcome you are part of that number the number of overcomers the people who overcome on the road you overcome in the house you overcome in the dream you overcome in the church you overcome in the office you overcome in temptation you overcome in trials you overcome at the time of sickness you overcome in a time of affliction you overcome every time everywhere you find yourself you are more than a conqueror you are an overcomer 
In Jesus' name we pray. I said, In Jesus' name we pray. I said, In Jesus' name we pray. Where are the overcomers today? Where are the people that are more than conquerors today? Keep up those signs in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we thank you because we know from the very beginning when the devil rose up, when Lucifer rose up, and he wanted to contradict your plan, your purpose, your prophecy, your plan, and your promises, and the word of God, and what you have decided, he was overcome. And today we have your plan. Today we are the people that you have chosen and we are part of your purpose and we are part of your plan and we are part of the declaration of the prophecy of the word of God because he tried to fight against you. That's why he's trying to fight against us. You have overcome him on our behalf. Therefore, we are victorious in Jesus' name. I pray for every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl here tonight. I'm asking, oh Lord, the victory of Jesus Christ. And the victory over the dragon. You give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that in whatever direction the devil may come against any of your people, in trial, in tribulation, in temptation, whatever it is, the troubles of this world, every brother here, every sister here, every child here, give everyone the victory in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray now for anyone that is going through some troublous times and some conflicts in their families. I pray, Lord, all that fire of affliction from the devil, we bring them on our feet in Jesus' name. Every affliction and every demonic oppression upon your life, I cancel everything right now. I destroy everything right now. Be free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the people that the devil has been discouraging. He says, you'll not get married. He says, you'll not have child. He says, I know what to do to you, to oppress you. I'll not allow you to have everything your heart is desiring. I knock the hand of the devil. Away from the lives of your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every good thing you have promised your people and Satan is trying to fight against the promise of God and against the purpose and the plan of God in their lives. Lord, we defeat the devil right now. We defeat the devil right now. And I pray, O oh Lord, grant them all the blessings they require from you in Jesus' name. And for these, our sons and daughters, the youth, the young people who are here with us today, they are going through their exams now. We are praying success will be theirs. Victory will be theirs. We are praying, oh Lord, whatever the plan of the devil to discourage any of our children, we conquer the devil for them. We destroy the works of the devil for them. Young people, the blood of Jesus I sprinkle upon you. The word of God I put in your life. And right now I pray that every blessing the Lord has for you will be preserved for you in Jesus' name. For everyone here today, I pray victory will be ours. Victory will be ours. Everyone here will walk out in victory and be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you are